book of the Revelation. The book of the Revelation, please, and we're turning to chapter number 1. The book of the Revelation. In chapter number 1, and we're going to commence reading, please, from verse number 1. The Word of God says this morning, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, that's unto John, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent it and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the Word of God, and of the testimony of Jesus Christ, and of all things that he saw. Verse number 9, Peter, sorry, John writes, John says, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice, as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about with the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his, and his hairs were white like wool, and as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went the sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, for I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen and have the keys of hell and of death, and write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. And the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest, in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading of His own precious truth this morning. There's no doubt about it, child of God, no doubt about it whatsoever, that it's getting more and more difficult more and more difficult to live our lives out for God in these days. Living our lives out for God without opposition, that is. Because, mind you, we're facing opposition in these days that we didn't face five years ago. And mind you, the dark clouds 
of all oppression and persecution against the people of God and against the very Word of God, they're very much on the horizon and they're very much gathering upon our nation today. And in the days and the weeks and the months to come, it's going to get harder. And it's going to be more difficult to really live your life out for God and to really stand for the truth of God without facing opposition. There's things we're facing today we never faced five years ago. And I wonder this morning in a personal sense, wonder are you suffering in some way because you're living for the Lord? You're suffering in some way because you're living according to the Word of God. That's how we Christians are to live each day. We're to live according to the Word of God. We're not allowed to compromise with the world, but too many Christians today are gathering under the umbrella of compromise. And so many churches today are gathering under the umbrella of compromising. Compromising. So that we don't offend, sorry, they don't offend. the sinful set state of today's society. Just listening to the radio this week, they're now pushing for to take out the saying, ladies and gentlemen, because they don't want to offend anybody who don't know what sex they are. And they want to replace it with everybody. And there's some churches, and they're taking out the words male and female and putting in the word humanity just to compromise with the sinful sex state of today's society. And child of God, it's going to get more difficult. to live for God and to stand for truth, God's truth, in these days. And maybe this morning there's someone here and you're suffering in these days. You're suffering for your faith. You're living for the Lord and you're suffering for it. And maybe this morning you find yourself in some place, in some situation, and you're facing opposition because of your biblical conviction. When Paul was writing to Timothy, he said this, Yea, and all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And mind ye, there's a brave, dark wave that's heading in our direction in these days. Not allowed to talk about sin anymore. And sometimes there's men and 
and they won't mention the blood, and that's an offense to people. They can't mention the cross. But you know, dear child of God, in these days that's coming, we're going to learn to take our stand, if you're going to ever take your stand. We're not to compromise God's truth. We're not to compromise these lives of ours. We're to take our stand. And we're to take our stand in these dark days for God and for His truth. And you know this morning, child of God, if you're finding it difficult where you are, you continue to stand for the Lord. The Lord is faithful, and the Lord will see you through. And nevertheless, child of God, where you are this morning, perhaps maybe at some job, or wherever you find yourself this morning, in that place where it's not your choosing, it's not your desire, it may be your job, it may be your university, it may be where you live, but listen this morning, child of God, God has you there. And God has you there for His purpose. And God has you in that place to fulfill that purpose through you where He cannot fulfill it through you anywhere else. But the Lord has you in that place. And He wants you to know He has you in that place this morning even though you're finding opposition, and maybe you find it difficult, but the Lord has you in that place to bless you and for you to be a blessing to others. In the book of the Revelation, chapter number 1, in the opening chapter, we have this introduction that John brings to us. In verse number 9, and this is what he said, he says, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. And that's my text for this morning that the Lord has laid upon my heart. God wants to speak to us through that text this morning, the isle that is called Patmos. And first of all, the Lord wants us to see that the isle that is called Patmos, it was a place of, a place of isolation. Twenty-four miles off the west coast of Asia Minor, out there in the Aegean Sea, it was seen as the Alcatraz of that day. It was the place where people were imprisoned to, exiled to, for serious, it was a place of exile for serious criminals against the, the empire. It was a place of no escape. Twenty-four miles off the west coast of Asia, ten miles long and six miles away, the isle that is called Patmos. That's the place, but here's the purpose. And it was a twofold purpose, and first of all, I'm going to speak about man's purpose concerning Patmos. You see, man banished John to the isle that is called Patmos, and he was imprisoned to the isle that is called Patmos for his loyalty to the Word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ. 
And I wonder this morning, child of God, how many of us would be prepared to take the stand that John took to be banished away to this place, the isle that is called Patmos. Man thought that by removing John and sending him away to Patmos, that would bring an end to the Word of God, and it would bring an end to the testimony of Jesus Christ. Man's reason for the isle, which is called Patmos, was to banish and to finish the Word of God. And you know, on the isle that is called Patmos this morning, there was no local church. There was no Bible study. There was no fellowship. There was no other believers. It was a place of total isolation for the Apostle John in a spiritual sense. Maybe your Patmos this morning is your own home. You're the only Christian in your own home. I know what that was all like. Maybe you're the only Christian in your workplace. Maybe you're the only Christian in university. I don't know. And maybe this morning, child of God, you feel isolated by family and friends because you're taking your stand as a Christian. That's what the Lord is looking out for today. And I believe He's looking out for young people who's determined to take their stand for the Lord Jesus, no matter what the cost. I wonder this morning, child of God, are you being opposed? Do you feel this morning that you're isolated in this place? You know, I'm sure that when John got off the boat and looked up onto this rugged cliff where he was being banished to, I'm sure he wondered, what on earth am I going to do here? What use am I here for the Lord? But you know, friend, where man banished John, it was going to be the very place where God was going to bless him. You know, maybe you're finding it difficult this morning in a particular place to be a Christian. You're finding it difficult this morning to be a Christian where you are. But let me tell you something, and listen, it's not me, it's the Lord. Even though it's dark and it's difficult, God wants to use you there. And God wants to bless you there. The isle that is called Patmos was a place of isolation. Then when you slip down to number 10, you'll learn something else about the isle that is called Patmos this morning wasn't just a place of isolation, it was a place of inspiration. John, the great apostle, could say while he was banished on the isle that is called Patmos, he says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Here's John this morning, and I want you to picture John in your mind. He's isolated, and he's alone, and he's cold, and he's wet, and he's, he's here this morning with no Christian friends, totally isolated away from the church. But John could say on the Isle of Patmos that he was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Do you know what it means to be in the Spirit on the Lord's day? It means that John was experiencing unclouded, undaunted fellowship with the living God of heaven. 
You know, we'll look at John on the isle that is called Patmos this morning. Alone. Isolated. And he could say, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. I'm telling you, friend, this morning, away out 24 miles in a wee island from the mainland, surrounded by the waters of the Aegean Sea, no local church fellowship, no nothing, and he could say, I was in the Spirit in the Lord's day. Oh, friend, oh, wonder are we in the Spirit on the Lord's day and while we're here. It's sad how many believers a wee runny nose keeps them from the meetings. I have a wee touch of a sore head this morning. I'll not go out. That man McConnell shouting will make it worse. Cut my finger on Monday, I can't come out of the meetings. Wonder are we in the spirit at all this morning, child of God? The isle that is called Patmos. For John the Apostle, it was a place of isolation. But it was a place of of inspiration. Tracy and I lived beside a wee lady called Flory Wilson. She was housebound. She couldn't leave her home when she got the meals and wheels and all in and never left her door. She was like that for years. Remember one Lord's Day many, many years ago, gone up to see her and I closed the door. And I sort of snuck in, and she was a kind of deaf. But I heard her playing, and I thought there must, have been, there must be somebody here. There must, she must have a crowd in. And then I heard her say this, And Lord, where George is, will you bless him? And I didn't know what to do. And Tracy looked after her. And she'll testify to this. When you walked into Flory Wilson's home, whether it was a Lord's Day or a Saturday evening, it was a place of inspiration, you know. Closed up in her wee house, she was always in contact with God. No matter where you are, child of God, this morning, I wonder this morning, listen, I wonder are you enjoying, I wonder are you experiencing unclouded, undaunted fellowship with the Lord Jesus? I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. The isle that is called Patmos, it was a place of, oh, it was a place of isolation. It was a place of, of inspiration, but it was a place of communication. You remember in verse number 10, he says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard a voice behind me, a, a, a great voice so as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. You know, friends, John, even though he was banished away and he was alone in the island, is called Patmos. It was there on the isle that is called Patmos where God had him to really speak to him. And you know, child of God, sometimes God puts us into dark, difficult places, for that's the very place where the Lord wants to talk to us and talk to us in a way 
that he could never talk to us if he had us anywhere else. And even though he was the only believer in that isle, the isle that is called Patmos, yet it was there where the Lord spoke to I remember reading the story about Richard Wormbrand buried in a cell underground, suffered greatly, and yet God spoke to him way underground he was, and he was able to tap on the air pipes through Morse code, the gospel message, and Richard Wormbrand led many to the Lord, even in those terrible situations. You know, child of God this morning, Christ chose to communicate with John while he was in the isle that is called Patmos. And through John, the Lord Jesus wanted to communicate to these seven churches. You know, friend, this morning he heard a voice on the isle that is called Patmos. Wonder are you in the place this morning, child of God, where you hear his voice? Sometimes the place of isolation is the very place of inspiration, and that place of isolation is actually the place of communication. Well, that's how it was with John. But the place of isolation wasn't just the place of inspiration or, or communication. It was the place of glorification because it was there where John saw the Lord in all His risen glory. Let me say something this morning, child of God. That's what we need today. The child of God needs a fresh vision this morning of the risen, exalted, glorified Christ. That's what believers need in our day and in our generation of fresh vision of the glorified Christ. And I'll tell you, when John saw that vision, he fell at his feet as dead. That's how much it touched him. And that's what needs to touch you. And that's what needs to touch me today. A fresh glimpse of the risen, glorified, exalted Lord Jesus. I believe if we got a real vision of Christ the way John got it, I'll tell you, our prayer meetings will be filled. And if we got the vision that John saw of the isle that is called Patmos, I'm telling you, your Bible would become more precious to us. And if pastors and preachers got a fresh glimpse of the risen Christ, I'll tell you, they'd be preaching different. That's what we all need today. We all need this morning to get a fresh glimpse of the risen, exalted, glorified Christ. I'm going to finish. The isle that is called Patmos, what a place it was. Man saw to it that it was for banishment. God saw to it that it was for blessing. The isle that is called Patmos. Sure, it was the place of revelation, wasn't it? It was there where the risen Christ revealed unto John 
things which must shortly come to pass. And I'll tell you what John, what the Lord Jesus revealed to John while he was on the isle that is called Patmos. My goodness, they're happening in our very day. You go to the book of the Revelation, turn you to chapter 13, and at the very end, you know what it says? There'll come a time when you won't be able to buy or sell unless you take the mark of the beast. And they were on the TV the other day trying to get the nation to become cashless because the poor government has been done out of millions in tax. And it's all in the book of the Revelation what's happening in our world today. What John saw in 96 AD on the isle that is called Patmos, it's, being, it's happening before our very eyes. Cashless society is now contactless. You don't have to put your card into a machine now. You just wait. But there's something else in this book of the Revelation that's more near than a cashless society. It's the soon coming again of the Lord Jesus Christ to the air to rapture the church. What was the last words the Lord Jesus said to John? Behold, I come quickly. Today's world events, as they unfold before us, are all there in this book of the Revelation that John received on the isle that is called Patmos. Where you are today, child of God, listen, you live for the Lord. You stand for His Word because you have this promise. Even though you suffer, them that honor me, I will honor. And may our prayer be this morning, be that of our closing hymn, where the chorus says, Draw me nearer, nearer. Blessed Lord, to thy wounded side. And that needs to be our prayer this morning, to be close to him. May God bless his word to our hearts this morning for his name's sake. Six hundred and